way overthinking this COVID video. And at this rate, I'm never gonna get done. This is 11 pages worth of writing. And yes, my situation here is a little awkward, but I had to get the lighting right. And it probably isn't still. And this is probably making some kind of a buzzing noise, but let's just go do it. And uh, I'm gonna read this. Reach underneath. So, let's say you're bored and you're hungry and you want to kind of resume a normal life, but the danger still looms outside. You know, this video probably won't help you, but it might. And if you want to see my routine for going outside and high risk situations, uh, then keep watching. Unless you hate ASMR videos, in that case, um, you're probably gonna hate this too. I've probably missed the mark in terms of timing with this video, but I wanted to be sure I had a good enough um, idea of what I was talking about. Although I'm still very anxious about what I'm about to say, feel free to correct me. Um, I think that's great to I'm just checking out recording. I think it's great to sort of have a dialogue, and I can't be perfect, obviously. This is not something I really understand, um, but I have uh, been reading a lot of stuff online. Um, you know, can't always trust what you see online. So, um, keep that in mind and call me out if I say anything wrong. I don't, obviously, like, this is the health thing, so I kind of have to get it right. So I'm going to jump right into it by talking about the garb that I've donned while I go out and my procedures. Um, some things are practical to use when the lockdown is lifted, um, but other things are kind of extreme. I know a lot of places are either in phase two or phase three of reopening, um, so yes, some things can be seen as extreme, and you may be given a hard time if, say, you wear a full respirator when you go to work or something like that, but some of the things are easier to use and to find right now because a lot of things are hard to find. So, let's say you have to leave the house on an average of one, oh, seven to ten days to get food and supplies. Although for me, the time interval should increase or has increased with each run that I make. So, I'm going to explain everything as if I had never gone out before, because decontamination is an entirely other step which I will address at the end. So, first, oh, I ran through everything in my head that I would have to do and came up with a step-by-step -step procedure. Um, summer is slightly different than winter, but I'm sort of gonna uh, average out what I do for each for this video just to make it more concise. So after I brainstormed, I put everything down on paper. Just right here. This darn chair. Okay. So I have one, two, three, four. Five pages of information. Okay, so I have my shopping list here. And what I did, see? So what I did is I put each piece of paper in a plastic sleeve and then I 
sort of sealed it with uh, packing tape so that way I can seal it duh, so I can make it waterproof and I can spray it down if I need to and you'll see here what do I got? I have to keep consulting this okay, so this is page one which is a checklist of things I have to get ready before I go out and you see it's not entirely waterproof. It's all here, but I've got it memorized by now. It's only for at the beginning. So, what do I have? What do we have for clothing? We have a outer baggy pair of pants, thicker for winter, and lighter weight for summer. And then we have inner leggings, already either lightweight or thick. Depending if it's winter or summer again. Two silicone shoe covers, a hairband, hair tie, B100 filters, a 3M half mask, goggles, and nitrile gloves. And then we'll have items that I carry on my person right down here. This is the list. So, what do we have? We have two hand sanitizers. I refill before going out from a larger bottle. Two perfume spray bottles with 70% isopropyl alcohol. My ID, credit cards, health card, my phone, extra gloves and alcohol wipes, car keys, wallet, and an extra Ziploc bag. If you're gonna go out for an extended period of time, or you're gonna go a few different places like I do, you should change your gloves halfway through um, because uh, the nitrile gloves will degrade from the disinfectants over time and I prefer 5 mil nitrile gloves let me get it these guys let me show you the brand So, it doesn't say in the box if it's 2.2 um, or 4 or 5 mils, that's the thickness of the glove. So you'll have to look it up online to, yeah, to confirm. So if you go to the manufacturer's website, usually that's where I found it. So these kinds the 5 mil, but they're hard to find. So, um, what do I say? Oh yeah, you don't want your gloves to burst open a tear while you're in the middle of something. So I've had that happen before, where I've had a, a cut, a cut on my hand, and your skin is supposed to um, stop for an from going into your body. So that's why you have gloves in addition to using disinfectant. So I had a cut once on my hand and I burst through my gloves while I was out and that was a little anxiety provoking. So I had to make sure that I used a lot of hand sanitizer and also the gloves protect from the copious amounts of chemicals I applied to my hand. So I also have these. I don't know if you've seen these. These are the Quest 2.2 and it's 2.2 mils. And they're actually surprisingly good for being so thin. I don't know. Sometimes I've used two of them at once. And then I have. I have another kind. I'm just doing stuff down here in my lap. This kind. Dermark. So, 
And these are the like food prepping kind of nitro gloves. And these are four mils, I think. I believe so. So yes, I have the white ones, the blue ones, and the black ones. So let's turn the page. Oops. From this side to this side. something tight and lightweight and moisture wicking. This is my favorite workout outfit from Gymshark. I put on baggy pants over the leggings. These are from harempants.com. I washed them in hot water and so far they haven't fallen apart. Whatever band I use, it usually has an elastic waistband as well as elastic ankle cuffs. I often pull them over my shoes. I put on an outer shirt over the top, usually with a hood to cover my hair. This one particularly can't be laundered in hot water, so it has to be put aside for a few days. I like to tuck the over shirt into the pants. So I may not accidentally touch the shirt underneath. But if it's really hot, I will use these scarves. So two of these scarves. They're just for UV. And since they're not long enough to go over my hair entirely, I will to slightly offset and tuck it into a hat. But I usually do this over the mask. I just didn't want to wear it this time for the, the footage. So, next step. Where am I? Oh yes. All these clothes can at least be washed or will be washed in hot water. Otherwise, I have to put them aside for nine days before I wash them in the delicate cycle. The WHO recommends laundering your clothing in at least 140 degrees Fahrenheit or 50 degrees Celsius. Dry these clothes thoroughly as well. You might want to check your manual for the washer and dryer to see how hot they now that I have my clothes on, I put on my shoes, and over that, I put shoe covers, silicone shoe covers. I have two pairs. I have this. This is the black. Lots of things stick to them. And I also have a white. Get this. And the white is harder to make look clean. Looks like a stain. It's been used quite a bit. So I got these in medium, and I'm a 8.5 US women's size. Just so you know. So let me tell you a bit about them. I have, oh, I have the link down below. I forgot. So these are made of super stretchy silicone with tank track dread to prevent slipping. So, so far they haven't ripped and I have to pull them pretty um, hard to get them over my shoes. Um, but they make it easy for your, for you disinfect your shoes without having to worry about damaging the rubber 
the neck straps. This is the quick latch function. And then I'll pull like this. That's how you can get it off your head. And then close it. These are the bayonet attachments. So you see there's like three little pieces. And there are different size sizes, so you can fit it. You know how to fit it together properly. And this is the inhalation valve. These two. And this is the exhalation. The exhalation valve. So I can show you the inside. these little like membrane type silicone pieces that go into the inside and this is what the valve is so this closes closes it depending on if you're breathing in or out so let me put that back and I also after everything I just said I recently was going through my stuff and I came across this in a container that I, I've never worn this before and it wasn't taken care of very well so this is the 3M half piece reusable respirator I think it's, what is it? yeah, 62, 6200 so it has the same bayonet attachments then it has also these little pieces here that come off if I can get it for cleaning there so this is slightly different it's um it's a lower quality less expensive back in university for art stuff but I ended up using the spray paint without the mask because I didn't really want to research anything I just think I was lazy and I was stupid so whatever and it sucks that I didn't know I had this but now I have two which is even better now I rotate between the two um, so I washed it and I checked all of the components to make sure that it was still okay the inside membrane and then take it out again it's the same as the other one oh, I'm going to my fingers in it it has this rough texture texture to it because it's older and hasn't been damaged in some way one side is smoother than the other which is weird um, but the main difference if you look this plastic this plastic is being worn down right here so it looks like it's gonna break soon already in order to open this one you have to pop this off and sort of grasp here and when you do that, you put strain you put strain on the plastic where it attaches to the straps so let me So the, the exhalation valve is a little bit different than the, the rugged comfort quick latch. So, yes, I already said all of this stuff. So now we're going to talk about the cartridges that attach to the masks via the bayonet connection. I have two kinds. 
one is black and one is yellow and the black is not here because it's in quarantine because I recently used it and I don't touch them again for a while I think I used it yesterday so it's still in a garbage bag downstairs so this is the yellow one the black one is Ovi P100 which is organic vapor with a particle rating of 100 the yellows like this
think that diffusion is the most relevant with smaller virus particles. Many people think that filters are like a sieve, like a sieve which has like homogeneous holes, but it's not quite. People think of it more in the way that um, interception and inertial impaction happens. Um, so inertial filtration is when a particle is moving too fast, and it's because of its size that it moves that fast that it cannot follow the stream of air to get around the fibers of the filter. Um, and interception is basically just like a particle running into the fiber, I think. Again, I'm getting excited. Smaller molecules, less than one micron, but more so around point one not 0.1 microns are subject to diffusion because of something called the Brownian molecular motion, wherein they sort of float and collide in the air and wisp along the air streams, one stream to the next. So the worst particle size is actually in a range that is too large to be pushed by diffusion and too small to be captured by interception or impacting. So between 0.1 and 1 microns, which is where 0.3 microns is, and that's the size used in the filtration rating system, which is about the middle of this dip in efficiency that happens diameter sizes. So diffusion to me sounds like the particles sort of bounce in between the air streams um, and thus they cover a greater area than the diameter of their actual size. The diameter of their size than their actual diameter and collide with a fiber from when they jump from one air stream to the next. So you have like two holes, and the air streams are going this way. So the particle is going this way, and it gets picked up from the other one, and on the way to traveling to the other one, it gets caught by the fiber. Okay, another really fascinating part that I've seen or read about is that the filter efficiency is actually affected by how often you breathe in the inspiratory, inspiratory, um, flow rates and whether or not the airflow is cyclic or constant. So supposedly in smaller particles, the electrostatic attraction decreases with increased air velocity. And I think of this like um, two magnets going, like passing uh, paths. So if you imagine happening, whether you do fast or slow, affects the likelihood of them glomming onto each other. <laughs> so, I try to breathe a little slower when I have these, the mask on. I don't know, that's what I figured that means. And supposedly, the opposite is true for larger particles. So, I saw one study where the efficiency was 90% for 0.1 microns in high flow conditions, which is not very good filtration compared to the 99.97. Um, I also just learned that the filters lose electrostatic charge over time, and I don't so I don't really think of this as relevant to my choices because I reuse my cartridges. Um, another thing is accumulation of COVID variants could even cause electrical 
interference because they are electrically charged themselves, maybe, I think. Um, so there, yeah, there's interference between the neighboring charged fibers that decreases the efficiency over time as well. Um, but I could be making a total butthead of myself by saying that. But the conclusion is that basically it's not the diameter of the particle that determines the filtration efficiency. After everything I've read, the worst you seem to have to worry about is actually um, just normal fitting or typical use. So the particles penetrate these masks mostly through what is called a, or what is called face seal penetration. The seal around the mask is like very, very important and compared to many other options that are available to normal civilians, the, um, the half masks are pretty good in terms of the seal that they provide. So I just have to make sure that my seal is on proper and that I don't get too cocky, maintain my distance and breathe slow and calm. Inversely though, which is even more fascinating to me, is that as long as it hasn't absorbed anything that degrades the fiber, like oils or something like that, the filter actually could get more efficient with use from the sieving perspective because the particles get stuck inside and then there is less space for the air to move through so it basically just gets gunked up obviously this makes breathing a lot harder so I mean you have to pick and choose, I guess. Um, I'll also just quickly... What does it say? I also have seen people say that the viruses could be shedding from the filters when you remove the mask or the cartridges. Um, so it traps the virus and then when you take it off it gets dislodged because you're shaking it and stuff. So some people have suggested putting a nitrile glove over the filter before you remove it and to hold your breath or something. Um, but I, I don't really do that right now. So yeah, anyway, we were talking about something completely different. All right, getting ready. <laughs> okay, so back to the process of getting ready and putting on the respirator. So you place the plastic strap on the crown of your skull and hook the lower straps together behind the neck. From here, adjust the mask for comfort. You can check the seal either with negative or positive pressure. For negative pressure, put your hands over the inhalation valves and breathe in. You shouldn't be able to detect any air coming in. For positive pressure, put your hands over the exhalation valve and breathe out. Same thing. There should be no air escaping. Adjust the straps until you have a seal. I check the seal in different head positions as well. I've learned to not overly tighten the mask in order to get a seal and rely more on positioning, sometimes tightening or loosening the top and bottom straps, respectively, helps. Then I put on the cartridges. Start right side, clockwise. Left side, clockwise as well. And I do a pressure check after they are on as well. Now most of the time I put on goggles, like these. These are safety goggles, but they're a little too big to go comfortably over the mask. So there are holes around, but also this keeps it from fogging. And I just recently got a pair of swimming goggles because they are waterproof. But they still 
offer some protection, these ones. I do this because you can get infected through the eyes. Oh, I'm putting on the goggles here. I like how they point downward. Like evil eyebrows. Then I put my hoodie up over the mask straps. Or if it's really hot, I'll just put on the scarf.
put on goggles, then hoodie, grab all my stuff, say goodbye to Kui, the dog, bye bye Kui. Put on shoes and shoe covers. Saturated paper towel and I disinfect every 
every single thing before putting it in the bag. With bags like this, it's faster and easier just to use a spray. Same with the produce bags. The plastic in the trunk protects the upholstery and ties it around. Massaging my bananas in the parking lot. Hands again. I put the cart in the cart to have stall thingy. If I were getting in the car right now to go home or someplace else, I would disinfect my feet. But the next place I have to go is in the same plaza. So I just wiped down anything I could have touched. Take my credit cards and my hand sanitizer in my pockets, once again. And head to the next place. This time I bought 70% IPA. Unopened, these will last until 2024 and are hard to find anywhere except for this specific corner store. So I have a few bottles and more hand sanitizer. Again, disinfect the outside of the Ziploc bags. Spray the insides of my pockets in a weird and suspicious way. Take two paper towels and saturate them with cleaning fluid. I don't disinfect the mask or goggles when I get into the car. The cleaning fluid is not compatible with the material of the mask. I just make sure not to touch my face. Close the trunk. And sit in the driver's seat, but do not put your feet into the car. My right foot, or in the UK, would be my left. I wipe with one of the paper towels. I put my right foot into the car. Then I put my camera down. Then I wipe my left foot and put that in the car. hand sanitizer, including the outside of the bottle. Oh, it's supposed to fly. Frozen broccoli. At least we got the chips. I am so sweaty in this that every time I breathe in, the sweat is like a mist that I inhale. And I can feel it flashing. Because it's like going onto the inside in here. And so when I breathe in, this air goes through and it like aerosols or something. Do it again. Go! Oh my face. My face hurts. This is the time it starts to hurt right here, like a... And then I know I have, depending on my fortitude, I have about 15 minutes to 20 minutes. 30 minutes would be really impressive. Anyway, there's a cute dog right there. Looking away now. Oh. Yeah. Damn it! I want to get out. Let me out, let me out, let me out. Whoopsie. No. Oh my god, it's so hot. Let me out, please. Okay, anyway. I used to also wipe down everything I touched in the car. The steering wheel. Clutch. All the knobs, the seat belt components, the clickers, and the door handle. If I had used the seat cover, I'd wipe that too and put it in a garbage bag in the trunk. But I don't. the soup log bags. On a table outside, I 
I'll spray them down, including my house keys. But really, this is a redundant step. Open the door with the disinfectant covered keys. Spray hands. Get the bags that were left in the backyard ready. Remove the jacket. Put in bag. Spray hands. Take off pants. Put in bag. Spray your hands. Turn shoe covers inside out. Put in bag. Spray your hands. If hoodie has a zipper, take it off now. Take off the goggles. Put in the white bag. I spray so often because I don't want to spread anything, especially here. And hook behind the neck and unlock the quick release. Put the mask in the white bag. Close the bag. Spray it. Take off hoodie, put in garbage bag. Put that on container and spray the outside of the container. Throw gloves in trash. Container goes somewhere, you won't be touched. Take a shot if you're worried. Just remember one thing. The things in the ziplocs. If you use them all out, they are potentially even if you used sanitizer, I tend to feel rushed and not be as thorough. You can move them around in the bags if they are sealed. But if you wish to take them out, you will need to sanitize them. My credit card is what I am most worried about since I often have to use the keypad in conjunction with its use. My phone is usually the first thing I take out when I get home because I'm an addict. And although I almost never touch it while out, I still, just in case, use an IPA pad to disinfect it. I would disinfect them sooner rather than later once you get home, so you don't forget they are contaminated and accidentally reach in. If you can't trust yourself to remember, put them in your contamination container with the mask and the clothes. Now we will leave the container with all the clothing and the mask for nine days. But if I want the stuff sooner, here's what I do. I open up the container and I launder the clothing. Put it in the dryer. Wash your hands after. Take the filters and put into a Ziploc bag. Sanitize the outside. When dry, write the date it was last used. These filters will be put aside for at least nine days. Next time I go out, I will use a different pair and alternate between the two. Take a container and put into it the mask, the goggles, and shoe covers and clothes. Spray the outside. If I wore a jacket or took anything like a, a fanny pack, those can't be washed, so they have to stay in the container for sure, for nine days at least. I take the container with the mask and shoe covers and carefully transfer them to the sink or a bucket. And I wash with this laundry detergent. The manufacturers of the mask call for it to be washed in mild detergent without 
lanolin or solvents and I find it hard to find info on what to use so I hope this is okay for the rugged comfort pull off the front and remove the valve components check for degradation I use a paper towel to scrub the mask, goggles, and shoe covers if you're really worried you can use bleach on the mask maybe the goggles and shoe covers but some material can actually get messed up by bleach it's okay to put the mask in the bleach bath for sure wear goggles, long sleeves, and shoes in a well-ventilated area when using bleach I don't do bleach soak anymore, especially now that I have two masks to alternate I don't really see why soap and warm water wouldn't work You can just google the bleach ratio that 3M recommends Finally rinse and hang to dry It'll be dry the next day, or maybe 4 or 5 hours Although I've used shock towels to dry it in the past when I needed it right away the straps will probably still be wet and I don't know if it causes them to degrade faster to do that probably so it seems disingenuous to conclude with that's all but that is all to the video at least since it was so much stuff uh, but I just gotta say thank you for watching I love you and uh, I hope you found it in and also kind of relaxing but um, I don't think it's easy to make this topic relaxing especially since a lot of people are affected by it now but I hope you stay safe and uh, try to find some kind of sense of normalcy okay everybody I'll see you later